because our God is worthy. Because the Bible says, when uh, one or two or three are gathered, I then they are missed. Let's ask for the Holy Spirit of God to come and do in our midst this morning. And we don't want to just come in vain. Now God should come and dwell with us. That we, 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 we want his manifestation in our midst this morning. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, the Son, the Father, Lord, we invite the Lord this morning, O oh Lord, come and dwell with us in a mighty way, in a miraculous way, in the name of Jesus. Let's tell this to him, that today's service will be glorious, that today's service, all our expectations shall be met, in the name of Jesus. That in today's service, we will not just come as a normal coming, that today God will have a great impact in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord, pray Lord, that today's service will not Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let's tell it to him that today, oh Lord, all our prayers will be answered speedily, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That today's service, oh Lord, there will be signs and wonders. There will be testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let's also pray for all our members that are still on their way. That God should extend their steps here. That God should bring them here stably, Lord. And nothing will be will be an hindrance to them, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, and the Lord will pray for all our members, O oh Lord, that are sitting on their way. Now the Lord is in their steps here, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And the Lord bring them here to come and have a great encounter with you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus to this today starting from the beginning to the end, O oh Lord. Blood of Jesus, come and saturate this environment in the name of Jesus. We cover all our services with the blood of Jesus. From this opening prayer to the end of the service, O oh Lord, with the blood of Jesus. And the Lord, there will be no even there will be any casualty, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will pray at the end of the service, O oh Lord. May your name may alone be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We declare the service open in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Shout a big hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah. Stand up and just lift up your voice to heaven and just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your voice to heaven and just begin to exalt his holy name. Lift up your voice to heaven and just magnify him. Open up your mouth to God this morning and just reference him. Give him the fruit of your lips. You've not come to meet with any man, you've come to meet God, so just commune with your father. Lift up your own worship to God this morning.
For you are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious dream, not to give up.
Lord, you are good and your mercy lasts forever. Oh, 
of God and begin to thank him. Let's just begin to thank him. Let's just give him praise. Let's wave our hands to God. Let's wave the hands that God has given us. Let's wave it to him and give him glory, give him praise, give him honor and adoration for he has been good to us, for he has been faithful. Church, let's wave our hands to this God. Let us wave our hands to this God. Father, we honor you. Father, we give you glory. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. says I've seen the Lord's goodness, his mercies and compassion. Even for the mercies of God, you can't be standing here today, whether you accept it or not. There are lots of people that have way more money than you, they are smarter than you, they are better than you. But where are they today? Let's go before God, brethren. And begin to thank him for the grace to be here today. The land of the living, standing on two legs. Father, we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank God for the grace to be alive. Let's thank him for his faithfulness unto us. Let's thank him for his goodness unto us. Let's thank him for the food that we eat, for the clothes that we wear. We are not sleeping under the bridge. We are not living in the gutters. Father, we glorify your name. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for divine provision. Thank you for fulfilling your promises concerning us. Father, Lord, may your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for our health. Brethren, let's thank God for our health. But we are not in the hospital. We are not begging for funds. There are people that are looking for millions and hundreds of millions of naira just to be able to stay alive. But here we are. What have we offered unto God this morning? The only thing we can give him is this fruit of our lips. The only thing we can give him is this offering of our lips. Father, we come before you thanking you, appreciating you, acknowledging that you are our God, that you are our source, that you've been our provider, you've been our protector, you have been our healer. Brethren, there are a lot of people that have the same sicknesses that you have had, that malaria has taken them. Even a simple injury, they are gone. But here you are, your wounds heal. Your sickness, you, you get sick and you get healed. It's not by your power, it's not by your might. You say, oh, I'm having a headache, I'll just use parastamol and you are fine. So many people have that same headache and they are gone. It's not by your power. So this morning, open your mouth and say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I am grateful for your love. I am grateful for your kindness. Thank you for counting me worthy to receive mercy, to receive compassion, 
to receive grace. Brethren, if God has counted you worthy, that's why we are here today. Say, thousand will fall by your left, ten thousand by yourself, but it will not come near you. So many people have claimed that same verse and they are still gone. But it's only by the mercies of God who has counted you worthy that He allow us to fall, that He allow us to be victims of evil circumstances. Brethren, let's open our mouth and bless God. Father, we bless you. Father, we glorify you. We honor you. We can't thank you enough. Even if we take the whole 24 hours in a day, it's not enough. Even if we take the whole seven days a week, it's not enough. Even if we take the whole month to thank you, it's not enough. Father, we pray that you accept this little one we have brought before you this morning. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We can't say it enough. We can't thank you enough. There is nothing that we give you, there is nothing that we bring before you that is going to ever be enough. Father, we pray that you accept this token of thanks we have given you this morning in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory and we thank you even for the greater things you are set to do in today's service. We thank you that you shall bless us today. We thank you that none of us will go home empty-handed. We thank you that all our expectations are met. We thank you that our tomorrow is already better. We thank you that our future is already great. And we thank you that you are taking us to greater, greater heights. And we thank you that at the end of the day we will finish well and we will run our ways well. Thank you, dear Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let us be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to take our confession and then we'll be taken to our standing. Let's just have it. Can we all see it? Can we all see it? Okay. So let's go. One, two, go. I am God's heritage. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am destined to be great. Because greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world. Though I am in the world, I am not of the world. I am confident that I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because Christ lives in me and is lifted far above principalities and powers, I am above only. I am not a failure. I am a success. I am courageous. I am strong. I do not lose hope because Christ in me the hope of glory. I have been enabled for greatness, destined to succeed, empowered to excel, and in grace to prosper. I am unstoppable. Nothing can hold me down. No power of hell, no scheme of man, no evil prophecy can stop me from achieving greatness. I can do all things. I know all things. I have a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I have the ability of Christ. And because Christ lives in me, my greatness is sure. Amen. I am great. I refuse to be small. Let's say this again. I am great. I refuse to be small. One more time. I am great. I refuse to be small. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let's have our seats. Praise the Lord. In continuation of this morning glorious service, we are taking our Bible reading from the book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. The kingdom of heaven is, is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. Verse 17. And likewise, he that had received two, 
he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants comments and reconnect with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, that deliverance unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Is not said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into thy joy of the Lord. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, that delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Is not said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an ad man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and eat thy talents in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thy is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strode, thou art therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. 29. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away, even that which he hath. 30, which is the last word that we are reading today. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into utter darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I pray we will not be cast out in the name of Jesus. I pray that which the Lord has given unto us, we trade with it, and we have something to show for the Lord with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's raise enough. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh, 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 my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like now. Father and our God, we bless you this morning. Father, O oh Lord, we exalt your holy name, O oh Lord. Father, for your goodness, your mercies, and your kindness that has brought us before your presence this morning, we say, Be thou glorified in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, O oh Lord, we have come, O oh Lord, this morning to receive your word. Father, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that you shall grant the spirit of understanding, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that your word, O oh Lord, Father, O oh Lord, will bring us blessings, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that your word, O oh Lord, will transform us, O oh Lord, into profitable servants for you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord. And of it all, we shall glorify your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, blessed the Redeemer, in Jesus' mighty name that you have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please have your seats. Um, first of all, I want to thank the pastorate and to the healing leadership of the youth for this opportunity to speak to you on this occasion of the youth service and our theme for this month is wealth creation the Christian perspective wealth creation the Christian perspective um, last week last week Thursday um, the King Balan took us through creating wealth is godly work creating wealth is godly work that's what we discussed on Thursday so if you missed it please it's on our 
YouTube and our Facebook, you can go there and you can go and listen um, to it. Today, we are going to be looking at a Christian mindset towards wealth. A Christian mindset towards wealth. And to start with, we will have three Bible reading and three Bible texts. The first one is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Is, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that hath given thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. And our next one will be Proverbs 8.18. It says that riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Then our last one will be taken from Proverbs 10.12. Proverbs 10.12 says, The blessings of the Lord it is maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. So, just to reiterate, right, the definition of wealth abundance of valuable possessions or money. It is the abundance of valuable possessions of money. And why are we discussing it this morning? It is important we discuss this topic because your perception of wealth affects your ability to make wealth. Your perception, how you perceive wealth, it affects your ability to make it. And if we don't talk about it well, you would, um, so your, your family, your society, um, your school, your level of education, your work, all those things would shape your perception of wealth. The country you live in, right? If you are born in Nigeria, your perception of wealth will be different from if you are born in the US or Canada or wherever it may be. So it is very important that as a church, right, we, we talk to you about this very important topic because it is, it is very, very important, as, as you've seen from the Bible text, it's very, very important that we as Christians, right, are part of the wealthy. There are so many advantages that go with it. And we'll be looking at some of it. Yeah, some say that, oh, it's, you know, being wealthy is not a good thing and all that. Yeah, we'll look at some of those things and, and see how, as Christians, as youth, especially as youth, we should think about wealth. So the first question I ask is, why is wealth good? I try to answer, why is wealth good? First of all, for your own personal benefit, of course, wealth would allow you to live a very comfortable life. Live a very comfortable life. You can live where you want to. You can travel where you want to. You can eat what you want to. Wealth will do that for you. You will live a very comfortable life. It gives you peace of mind. Second thing as well. It gives you peace of mind. You, you, you know, maybe some of us, um, I've, I'm living in Ekwetu, so we don't get to experience the kind of things that certain people in certain areas do not get to employ. You are sleeping and your neighbors are fighting. You wake up in the, in the morning and people are, you know, arguing or fighting on so many other things. You know, but wealth gives you peace of mind. It gives you access to peace of mind to some extent, anyway. You know. To pursue fulfillment of spiritual things like a relationship with God and also fulfillment of your soul you know things like joy peace happiness you can only pursue these things properly if you have wealth else all what you'll be pursuing would be your bodily needs you know you'll be focusing on trying to get what you eat but when you're wealthy you're able to focus on more things rather than just what is going to and sustain you. Wealth is also beneficiary to your family. Okay? So you can provide a comfortable life for your family. 
You can support them to pursue their goals. It also helps you to maintain a godly home as well. Because you are able to really restrict and determine the things that your family engages in and the things that you can selectively and um, you do not engage in. Because you are able to afford to do so. There are also societal benefits. Your society also benefits when you are wealthy. So, you are able to help in the development of your community. And some people were born in the city, so they don't really know how this means. But if you are born in a village, you know, some villages maybe have water. There's only maybe one rich man in the community that has access to um, a bowl or pipe on water, and the community benefits from it. As a the also side of benefits in you're able to help the poor and the needy. Lastly, you're able to contribute to the spreading of the gospel. And this is very important. We can look at an example from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. Yes. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed to Shunem where there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And it was so, as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be that when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither so this was a rich man a rich woman was the husband they were wealthy people they saw a man of god and they were able to help him in his ministry they could not have done so if they did not have the means to do so so wealth gives you the to really contribute to, to, to spreading the gospel and God's work in general. So having this in mind, having this in mind, let's look at things that we need to keep in mind and things that we need to keep in mind about wealth as Christians. So I'm going to look at 10 things. The first thing is that money is good. Anybody who tells you that money is, is not good is lying to you. However, there's a caveat because it's, I, I specifically like to speak about this point because of um, 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's very often misquoted. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. A very often misquoted verse. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from their faith and perceived themselves through the many sorrows. So this is very often misquoted. The text says that the love of money, the love of money is good to the extent that you pursue it you no, know, you are pursuing it so much and you are not you lose your focus from God and you lose your faith. But money itself is a good thing. Alright? So that's the first thing I need to keep in mind. Money is not a bad thing. The love of money is not good, but money itself is very, very good. Point number two. How you make money matters. How you make money, it matters. There are legitimate ways of making money and there are illegitimate ways of making money. Getting money by all means is not, you know, that's not the end goal. There are good ways to make money and there are bad ways to make money. There's dirty money, there's blood money. That, that is not all good money. You know, and they don't benefit your society if you get gain money in those ways. In the same way, exploitation, getting money by exploiting people is not a good thing. So, I mean, if you, for example, if you have a business, you can't be not paying your workers, right? You are, you are 
you are doing business, you are getting this thing, and not you are not paying your workers. That is that's exploitation. It's not it's not good. Deceit. You can't be swindling people and for money, right? And expect, I mean, claim that God is blessing you. You know. Yahoo boy, yeah. God is not blessing you. You are swindling people. That's deceit. It's wrong. So and also theft. You know, robbing robbing um people, whether rich or poor. Um robbing hood or whatever it is. It is it is stealing is bad. End of story. Whatever the the this thing behind the stealing is, is bad. So how you make money matters and that's the second point that you need to note the third point is that those who become wealthy are those who have found a way to improve the lives of those who are around them and not necessarily those who are the most well educated To become wealthy, it's not necessarily that you must, you know, go to school, get your PhD, become a professor. I mean, if you look at the correlation between wealth and 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 uh, this thing, and medication, it's it's not it's not a, it's not very highly correlated. There's there's a correlation between education and standard of living. However, it doesn't rise. As you get more educated okay if you want to get wealthy you have to make the lives of the people around you better yeah. the mobile phone you have on you it makes your lives better You're able to reach your loved ones you know you can call them you know when we are not around you if, if you um, for some of us who were there when there were no mobile phones you know how hard it was you know to contact people and to reach people who were not around and now we take it for granted. You just call, ping, ping, ping. you ask, why are you not with your phone? You know, in, in back, back in those, you have to go and queue. You have to go and, if you don't have at home, you have to go and queue, you know, to, to, to make calls. In the same vein, you can do that in your community. Perhaps, um, um, I, I like their bookies so much. You see them, they set up their small shoe stand in front of, of, of their place where they are doing security, right? So they are able to help people mend their shoes. They are, they are, they are helping people to polish their shoes and all that. They are providing, they are making the lives of um, the, 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 the people in their community better. And that is how you make work. Okay. And I also raise the point of education because there's a perception that if you, are, if you, don't, if you go to university, it's really have to, you have to go to university to be wealthy. That is, is completely false. It's, it's not true. You can learn a trade. You can learn to become a carpenter. And you can learn to get a tailor. You can learn to become a trader. Okay? And, and still make a lot of wealth. There's, there's, there's no written law that says that if you don't go to school to a high level, you will not be wealthy. No. That very thing you are doing, you can do, you can become wealthy by doing it. But I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, go to school or anything. Of course, you know, there are tailors with degree, you know, and that is also there. But at least there's a starting point. Do what you are good at. Don't say that, oh, because you have to go to school, you're not going to be learning. Um, you know, something that you yourself, you don't even understand, but you're just doing it just to be passed. And out of, it, out, of it, out, of it, out of every semester, I'll be struggling with your lecturers to let my people go as they say. I'll be struggling with them. So it's very important to treat. Is as a treat is as important as education. Learning a treat is as important as, and it's as valuable as going to university. And then just the last one before I move on that. I, I really admire the Igbo culture, you know, that the culture they have of, you know, and, and entrepreneurship or apprenticeship rather, where people from a young age go and learn to trade, go and learn to trade. You know, 
you look down and I said, oh, these people are this thing, but if you want to become a, a doctor, you have to go through apprenticeship. Yeah, you go to school and all of it, but you have to go and you will learn with people who have gone through that training. That is how you become a doctor. So why would you, you know, why, why are you looking down upon someone who is going to learn to be a trader? And you find out that those people are very, very successful. So we should not look down upon learning a trade. Being wealthy does not make out of context rather. Matthew nineteen verse twenty-three. Matthew nineteen verse twenty-three. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. There's a context to this thing. He said this because there was a preceding verse. Let's look at verse 21 and 22. So he was talking to, Jesus was talking to a rich man, right, who was, you know, he wanted to come and follow him. And this is what Jesus said unto him. And Jesus said unto him, If doubt will be perfect, go and sell that Sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, that thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. As soon as you said, but the young man heard that saying. And, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. So this was a man, you know, talking about service. He has been doing all of these things, and you know, Jesus asked him to sell all he had and come to follow him. And the man couldn't, I don't know, he just couldn't understand. He thought that by doing that, he was losing, I don't know, he was losing himself. I don't know, or he was becoming a different person. Or he was losing his status and in, 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 in that he has built up for him, for himself. Okay. That was more important to him than his salvation, than his relationship with God. And that is the kind of behavior that would not, the kind of mindset that would not lead you to heaven. No. So it is not that, yeah, maybe being a wealthy is a bad thing, but it's how, again, mindset. What is, the, is, is wealth your everything? I mean, it's your wealth is with all you see. You don't even associate with poor people. I mean, all your friends are rich people. You don't, well, poor people cannot, you, you look down on poor people. You know. How is a relationship with God? You think you don't need God because you can buy everything you have. Okay, so if you have that mindset, then you will not enter the kingdom of heaven, rich or poor. Being poorer does not make it easier for you to get into the kingdom of God. No, it doesn't. So being wealthy, the point number four, being wealthy does not make you a sinner. Point number five, possessions and money aren't an absolute measure of wealth. Possessions and money are not an absolute measure of wealth. Money, possessions can be lost. You can lose everything you have at any time for any reason. You can lose everything that you have. You know, so, I mean, people want to be able to be seen to be wealthy. So you see them, oh, they want to buy the latest iPhone because that's the phone the rich people use. They want to drive the best cars. Or they want to be seen driving the best cars, the best clothes, right? That does not make you wealthy. That does not make you, that does not make you wealthy. And people go to the extent of, I mean, we hear stories of people selling their kidneys to acquire of their body parts to acquire these things or engaging in all sorts of things. Wealth is not, a, it's not an absolute measure, right? If you lose what you have, how easily can you gain it back? If you lose everything today, how easily can you gain it back? That is the measure of wealth. And the prime example given to us in the Bible is Job. Job was a wealthy man. He was a very, very wealthy man and he lost everything he had. He became very, very sick for a very, very long time. But the most important thing is that he maintained his relationship with God. 
so that when the turmoil was over, he was able to recover not just what he had, but double of what he had. Okay. I mean, there are examples of people like that in the Nigerian society you can look at. People who have gone bankrupt. And that is that's one of the reasons why stealing, so you can go and steal someone's money, go and think that, that will not make you rich, it will not make you wealthy. The wealth is just temporary, very fleeting. That is not the kind of wealth that God gives. Point number six. Some possessions increase wealth, while others decrease wealth. So in acquisition of, of things, right, there are some things that you are going to you are going to acquire that are going to drain money from you. It's not everything that is beneficial to acquire. So this mobile phone, for example, I used to make calls. If calls, if personal calls is all you do, then it is draining money from you, right? But if this mobile phone, you are, for example, a trader where people call you or your, on your social media, people, and you post and people buy from you on Instagram or whatever you sell, then this phone now becomes something that generates income for you, okay? So having a car as well, having a car just to drive, you know, I don't know, um, around go and visit your friends then it's it is draining resources from you but then if that car is what you used to do, um, deliver the wares that you sell or um, uh, or, or um, you drive yourself to and fro from work it's more convenient for you to do so then that possession is generating wealth is generating more wealth for you and not draining your wealth so note that not all assets not all possessions are worth what acquiring acquiring some would add to your wealth some would drain from your wealth point number seven debt is good provided you are using it to increase your wealth. Debt. Debt is good. But it's only on a condition that you are using it for a purpose that is going to increase your wealth. By using it to generate income. Okay. So we've already said that um, possessions, there are some things that um, would would increase would increase your wealth and something that would decrease your wealth. So Borrowing money itself is not a bad thing, but if you are going to borrow money to do something that is going to decrease your wealth, then it is not, I mean, you should think about it twice before doing it. It's probably look elsewhere. Forget about that thing or look for other ways and opportunity. You okay. should borrow if you really need that capital to increase your wealth not just you know i don't know but wealth is not necessarily a um, debt is not necessarily a bad thing it's, it's not about it is good if you are using it to um increase your wealth that takes me to point number eight which is that pay back what you borrow Pay back what you borrow. It's not good to be a debtor. Pay back what you borrow. Psalm 37 verses 21. Psalm 37 verses 21. So the wicked poureth and payeth not again. But the righteous soweth and showeth mercy and giveth. Being a debtor is not a good thing. And that is why in the first point I said that putting your mindset of yes, that is, is not a bad thing. It's not it's good, but it is only good when you are using it to generate wealth. So don't go and borrow money to go and do something that um I don't know. 
that you are not sure of getting your return back, then when the people, when it's time to pay back, they are nowhere to be found. The mouth you used to borrow the money, they have now changed. You are now saying that the person is a wicked person. You are the wicked person, not that person. Right? So, let's take note of that. Pay back when you borrow. Point number 10. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. Do not spend your time on things that are not profitable. Things that would not gain you any profits in the future. They are not, not gain you money, but not profitable. You know, and this can be done. Like if you are spending time on social media, for example, how is that profitable to you? There are some people who are paid for being on social media. So if you want to be hanging out with such fellows to give them the metrics that will get them paid, that is up to you. But what about you? What are you doing with your own time? Are you studying to make yourself better in the future? Or you are just gisting with people, you know, to catch fun, you know, to see what's going on. Your time is very precious to you and how you spend it matters. That time you have is money. And use that to build a relationship with God. And all those things will give you future benefit. And a point number 10, which is the last one, is said, you can be more generous if you are wealthy. You can be more generous if you are wealthy. Wealth is a platform on which you can do a lot of good things. Whatever good thing you think you can do if you are wealthy, you can do even more than that. So let nobody deceive you that wealth is bad. In conclusion, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. Second Corinthians nine, eight. And God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Brethren, we serve, we serve a wealthy God, a creator of all things. As Christians, we need to possess Take possession of the wealth, the various treasures that God has placed here on earth for we, his children, we must not allow only the unbelievers to partake in it. And it is my prayer this morning that as we go forth into our lives, we will be influential members of our society. We will be able to influence our communities for good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up and let's say this prayer and say that, Father, bless me so I can be a blessing unto others. Let's talk to God. Let's tell God this morning that Father bless me so that I can be a blessing unto others. Bless me so that I can be a blessing to my generation. Bless me so that I can be a blessing to your work here on earth in the name of Jesus. And let's pray for our minister this morning that God, as you have used him to bless us this morning, That I will make him to have wealth, good wealth, that had no sorrow that God should give unto him. In you are also praying that for yourself, that the blessing, the wealth that you give me, 
the sorrow will be far from it. Father, that is the word. What I want, Lord, grant unto me this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Shand of this. Lord, we appreciate you this morning. We give you glory, honor, adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. It is offering time. All right. Thank God we just had. To do that, for you to get more wealth, I also need to give. One of the things that make the rich people get richer is because they give and they get back. So, but if you withhold what you have, then you are limiting what you will get. So, if you give, you are going to get a multiple fold. So, we have, we have uh, two offering envelopes with us. Each color. And the second one will be done later, which is Thanksgiving for the convention. And for those who have their tight seed and special offering, you can use this uh, envelope. So let's rise on our feet as we pray unto our offering this morning and say, Father, this is my token of law. Lord Jesus, accept it in Jesus' name. This is my vow that if I'm alive, I will give my offering, my seed, my tithe unto you. Lord, accept this offering from me in the name of Jesus and enlarge my course as you have accept my offering this morning. Lord, accept my offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless it, O Lord. Bless it, O Lord, and use it for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. And one of the ways to give, to get more, is to give bountifully and rejoicing. So if you just give and you just offer it sadly, it might not be acceptable. So as you are giving your offering this morning, I want you to give it smiling, dancing, rejoicing, and excited. Even if you give the least, be happy and let God know that you are actually giving the best. So as the choir leaders in the song, let us dance forward as we give our offering. Yeah. Come and join me, sing hallelujah.
the giver of life, the giver of wealth. Lord, we say thank you this morning. Thank you for all you have done for us. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the abundance you gave unto us. And thank you for the token we've given unto you this morning. Lord, accept it and accept us in Jesus' name. Accept our offering this morning in the name of Jesus. As our heart has given unto you, as our soul and mind and our dancing has given unto you this morning, Lord, let it be acceptable unto you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for as many in the house that say, when am I going to dance forward to give a bountiful offering? Lord Jesus, we pray for this morning, since they have it in their mind and heart, Lord, you will enlarge their territory in the name of Jesus. You will give them a godly wealth in the name of Jesus. Godly wealth that had no sorrow will be given unto each and every one of us this morning in Jesus' name. We pray for as many that want to give more than what they give. They are still praying that, God, I want to be given in thousands. I want to be given in checks. Lord Jesus, make way for them in Jesus' name. Lord, we say thank you this morning. As we continue in the service, continue with us in Jesus' name. We sanctify the offering in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. And let it be used for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth in Jesus' name. Thank you, ancient of this, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to take our announcements, but before we do, it's our practice to welcome those worshiping us for the first time. So if today is your first time worshiping us on a stone like this, please signify by raising up your hand. If you're worshiping us for the first time, today, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our CCG House of Glory, and we have a testimony that whenever we pray, God answers. So I'd like to just bow your head and ask God for something that you will remember for attending House of Glory for the first time. And I'd like to just stretch forth your hands to them and pray that the blessings of this house the Lord will release upon their life in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please, man, sir, don't be in a hurry to leave. Our hospitality team will attend to you after the service. Let's put them together as they go back to their seats. So for the benefit of those just joining us, we start our service on a Sunday like this with a Sunday school at 8.30. Service starts on Sunday with Sunday school at 8.30. And like we know, Sunday school is a time where we learn practical principles that we can apply to our daily lives, that we can practice on a daily basis. So the Lord will bless us as we come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So our Sunday house fellowship comes up in the evenings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. One center is in the church. Another one is in the Kurudu. 
So whichever one that is close to you, and one is also on Johnson Street. So whichever is close to you, please let's make time to attend. On Mondays, the prayer warriors meet for the prayer meetings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Monday. So if you have a prayer burden, you have a prayer request, or you you have what you want to pray about, you can join us every Monday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, we have our Bible study, which is the digging deep from 6:30 to 7 30 and it's a time where we have an opportunity to ask questions that we might not be able to ask during the service like this and it's also streamed on all our social media platforms on facebook on youtube and on mix lr for those who might not be able to make it down to church also on thursdays we have a prayer meeting with the faith clinic from 6 30 to 7 30 and it's also streamed on all our social media platforms if you are not able to make it down to church all women and mature sisters have their prayer meeting every Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every Thursday. So if you have a flexible, flexible work schedule, please always be a part of this prayer meeting. And our multi programs goes those on the first day of the month, we begin with Jesus from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. And it's streamed online on Mixella and we also have physical meetings as the case may be. So wherever it is, it's going to be communicated us before then but every first day of the month let's have it at the back of our mind that we begin the month with jesus every second saturday we have our prayer meeting the battle hour from 8 a.m to 9 a.m every second saturday of the month every third saturday of the month we have also another prayer meeting sweet hour of prayer at our provincial headquarters in victoria island and we had one yesterday it was a powerful time in God's presence. So let's always make ourselves available for all of these programs. Sisters' prayer meeting and reading management fellowship comes up immediately after the service today. Sisters' prayer meeting and reading management fellowship comes up immediately after the service today. And every last Saturday of the month, we have our evangelism from 5 p.m. And like we know, evangelism is for everybody, not just for pastor. Or the workers at Mesa. So every one of us is enjoying to make ourselves available. Praise the Lord. For those who want to join the baptismal class, believers class, and workers in training, please see Pastor Yiku after the service. Praise the Lord. We are also reminded of the wedding of the daughter of brother and sister Ikwere Polu that is coming up this Saturday. I thought we would answer that for Jesus. So the invitation is on the notice board at the back and directions on how we we'll get there also is on the notice board at the back so we can see that and make ourselves available and Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. You can follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook and on YouTube is RCCG House of Glory and on MixLR is HOG Look with you. If there are other announcements, the pastor will let us know. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Thank God for this morning, a special day in the house of God. I so will see the month of celebration. We are thanking God, like I said, this is the last month of the calendar year. The new year ends with our first year, starting in September. And so we need to just find you. We still have a certain matter with God, such as If you have expectation, your plan for next year, put it together. That's why you are here. And so, we're still going to have our country seeing the end of the year. Because it's, it's a wonderful thing. Like I said, what's important is that just come out of the shape of God. Don't for you have money to give. You don't have. Tell God, you know I don't have. If I have, I will give. You know that. Like Talk about wealth. In those days, they thought the poor, the church should be a collection of poor people. We've seen what churches are doing now. Churches are not made to be for poor people. They are not for beggars. Because God, our God, He says silver and gold are mine. Does God come to me? 
word to stand the silver and gold, keeping it for us. So when we do this way, he relieves it. And so we're going to say it. Okay? But before we do that, well, we are doing some unusual things uh, in the church this day. And I think that's God. Uh, before I forget, I want to thank all of you for bad day celebration as you. You know the joy as you grow old, as you look around you, you see people behind you. You see that people are following you. You see that people are there. So that when you be no more, there will be something. So I want to thank you. I want to thank those who brought me this. We're still opening some of you. Okay. I wanted to use one of the gifts to give this money. I forgot. But I will give you. You can be sure of that. So I appreciate you. I appreciate your I appreciate your coming to the church. I appreciate that you are joining your faith to serve God who will bless us. And so I want to seize that opportunity, praise the Lord, to let you know what we will be doing from September. Because like I said, it's a busy. We find out that we talk to people, we preach here. Sometimes we're just talking to people here. Especially for some group of people. So from September, we want to start what you call the teenage church. Where we have the teens together and tell them what they should hear. Because if you are talking about teenagers now, today we are talking about the world. It doesn't make sense to them. Daddy and mommy is giving them money to buy pop. We don't even know what you mean by way. But we tell them what they need to do. So that because they are our future. So what I need from you, I want volunteers who want to teach you team class. You know some of us are not qualified to be a team class. Because we don't even know how to learn. We want people who will be team friendly. Who can talk to the team. We we'll have a separate space for them until they go to that. So I want volunteers. And I also want you to invite your teammate friends around here. Because what you are doing is you are sowing seed of evangelism. Invite them. You see, by the time we are able to impart their life in the future, they will thank you for bringing them. So let mommies bring their teenagers. Let friends bring their children to school and all of that. Number two, is this number three now? We are still looking for more volunteers to work. Today is team, uh, it's a youth service. Uh, I expect to feel the vibe of youthfulness, even with the choir and so So we probably need more youth choir. It's good to serve God. I always tell you. Some of us had the privilege. We've been serving God from when we were small because our father was a gay reader. Of course, you know that if you don't go to church, there's Polish people to come back. We were forced to go, but we moved from being forced to go to enjoying going to now having to go because we think it was the option. But when you come to God, come with a clean heart. Clean heart. Don't come to church and you see people those evil things they are doing around. They will look at you and say, or oh, you they go to church. And you know the unbelievers can judge us easily. Have you? Say, yeah, but you they go to church, see what you do. Say, but you go. He said, she be me, I know they go to church. So your blessing also should differentiate you. That when they see your blessing, they say, ah, see how you are blessed. You say, yes, yeah, because I go to church. So I'm looking for volunteers. So you can see me. God will help us in Jesus Christ. So we want to celebrate uh, one of us. You know, everywhere I turn now, I see people who are born in August. So I thought all of us were born in August. I mean, it's becoming popular. So we want to celebrate Brother Augustus. He brought cake. And so let's, let's pray for him before we eat his cake. So can we have the cake? Can we have the celebrant? Let's just cut the cake. Let's pray for him. Let's go and eat the cake. Abby, they say we should celebrate 
with those who are celebrating, we should rejoice. Is that what you <sighs> Time is going, no, we won't go beyond the level 30. Yeah. Where's the cake? They want you to carry it to your hand. You oh, yeah. are God. You are not just big. You are not just large. You are a great God. You are God. Oh. You are God. You are not just big. You are not just large. Francis, you were singing alone. You didn't sing the one with Sabi. Can we stretch our hands to him and pray for him? I think you listened to his testimony the other time. He's not born here. But he has been here adding value, contributing. Thank God for his life. Thank God for grace and opportunity given to him to be part of the household of God. Tell God, say, Father, this new year, grant him his heart desire. That this time next year, when he will be here, he will testify concerning the heart desire. And I won't tell you the heart desire. But just pray, when God has done it, you know. You will see it. It cannot be hidden. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you. We are thanking you because you are ever faithful. We are thanking you because you never make mistakes with your plan and purpose for our life. Thank you for a fulfilled purpose in your presence this morning. Father, let your mighty hand be upon him. Bless him, O Lord. We thank you for what you have done for him, but we know you can do more. I pray that in this new year, you will go beyond his expectation in the name of Jesus. When he comes here to, for testimony next year, the testimony will be complete. Thank you, our Lord. I pray concerning his work, you will establish it. You will enlarge his coast. That concerning his work, we will have testimony in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So, can you cut the cake? Just hold the knife. You see now, if you are double now, we'll have passed your wife. One of the things that God will provide. Okay. So, we said Jesus. Give me a letter J. Letter E. Letter S. Letter U and the last S call together Jesus. Jesus will be your friend. Jesus will not leave you alone. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, can we remove that? Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. We're going to dance before I'm looking at the time. By 11 30, we need to be here. But there's some things that just make us happy. And that's why I like you. Right? You know, they have songs for everything that you can sing and enjoy. Inumidu, 
We pray more of Johnny. He no me do. We pray on each Congratulations. Shake your neighbor. Praise the Lord. Maybe you don't understand that one. The first one. The one I love for. Only he no me do. We pray more Johnny back in a meadow, we pray for the Lord. Congratulations. Can we dance forward? Give us a danceable song. Let's thank God for the new calendar year in our city. Let's come from the back. Congratulations. See what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrow and I am free. I got my brother, hallelujah. Where are the ushers? Please let them come. Let them come. Because of Jesus, every day I shall arise. Double, double, heavenly blessing. God, the goodness of his sister, let's follow. thank you for this day. We thank you for grace you gave us to celebrate our annual convention, to testify to your faithfulness that you even went beyond our expectation. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, I pray that you look down from heaven and see all these, your children, who are here in your presence. Let your mark be upon them. The mark of touch me not. The mark that will drive away powers of darkness from them in the name of Jesus. That because they were here today, Father, you will do a new thing in their life. As we are going to a new year, the old cloth are old. Give us new cloth. Give us new blessing. Give us a new beginning. So shall it be in your life. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, when I was preparing for today, I know it's youth Sunday. Usually I say youth Sunday, my own is to sit down and look. Just look at what I do. But I thought came to me that we should pray concerning the promises of God, concerning the, 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 the evil causes. The affliction around us. Because God says, I will take them away.
Can we uh, put on board on the notice board Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5? I'll just pray one or two there. Isaiah 53, verses 4 the reason you are here the reason christ is coming to take you home is because he has invested in you he said yet it was our witnesses he carried did you understand that we're not perfect we make mistakes we did so many things but it was those witnesses that christ carried to the cross and so weaknesses should no longer stand on your way to success weaknesses that you have will no longer be a barrier to your growth. He said it was our sorrow that weighed him down. That is, he took it away. I decree from this morning, sorrow will be far away from you. If anybody is bringing something that to depress you, tell him Jesus Christ has taken it away. So every sorrow that will come your way, Christ has taken away. He said, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. A punishment for his own sin. That's what we thought. But we knew he had no sin. He had not. Yet he was punished. Punished for who? Punished for me. Punished for you. As far as Christ. He said, but he was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sin. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was weak so that we could be healed. That's the message. As you go home, remember that somebody has paid the price. Somebody has taken away your sorrow. Somebody has taken away the punishment for your sin. What do you need to do? Acknowledge that person. Anytime you go, anytime you remember, just say, thank you, Jesus. There's no prayer that is bigger than thank you, Jesus. Because as you keep on thanking him, he wants to do more. So I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, because he has paid for sorrow, sorrow will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Because he has paid for your sin, no one could hold you accountable for any sin again in the name of Jesus. Because he was chastised by his stripes, you were healed. Sickness will have no place in your body again in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Go in peace. Go and prosper. Let the world see that you are a child of God. Every evil man, that the enemy has placed upon you, that they use as a tracer to locate you. They are wiped off by the blood of Jesus. And you have a new mark upon you, the one Paul born. He said, I bear the mark of Christ upon my body. Let no one trouble me. As from today, God will trouble the troublers of your life. He said, my peace I have given unto you. As from today, go and live in peace in the name of Jesus. And the joy of salvation will fill you. You will celebrate you will rejoice in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the service of today. As we round up, all we have to say is thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Fire, please. You know what to do. We are Redeemer united in love. Let's join, let's stand. is for all we shall conquer we are together united in love Jesus is for all we shall conquer we are victorious united in love Jesus is for all we shall conquer
find a neighbor, turn to your neighbor and make the confession concerning him or her. Second John chapter 1 verse 3. Let's go. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. Prophesy to yourself. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with me from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. We are going to prophesy to the church. Who are the church? We. So we are going to read it. Let's go. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. Once again, let me remind those who will want to see me because of their interest in one assignment or the other, or they just want to see me. You know it's good to see pastors. Even when we don't have anything to give you, God will give you. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, mercy and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. I wish the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before we shout hallelujah, after the counselors will have discussed with first time as to where we want to go to. Shall we shout a powerful hallelujah? Hallelujah. Speak to your neighbor. Prophesy to the life of your neighbor what you want to see. God bless you as you go.